we don't want dictators in government in the United States. Um, it takes a team to get anything done. It takes a plurality of members. It takes a governor. It takes a plurality of members in the Senate. In Pennsylvania, uh, we, in the prior fiscal year, had about a $29 billion budget. Uh, about 40% of that budget rolls the thumb in Pennsylvania. 40% of every state tax dollar you spend goes into um, human services or welfare. About 42% goes into uh, education and 9% goes to state police and corrections. So 91% of your state budget is in those three areas. So when somebody talks about increasing the state budget or meeting a state budget or tax increase, anytime we're talking about our state budgets, much like the budgets of your, of your companies, we have um, really three areas where the differences can be made. There are tax credits that have been out there for decades plus that have never been used. There, there's definitely reform that we could do. We could reform the CNIT. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing that you run up against uh, with any time you talk about making tax reforms in Pennsylvania um, is that we say tax reforms mean better business climate and we have, a, we, have, we have reasoning behind why those are good and I certainly support all of them as a taxpayer and as a lawmaker. But the other side spins that as saying it's just tax cuts. You're just you're just cutting taxes on big companies. That's all. That, they, they say that's what tax reform means. And that's the frustration that we run into in the Capitol. Um, and it's all because of, in those three areas of spending, there is what I refer to as the spending establishment that does not want to see their sanctuary disturbed. And in fact, they want to see their sanctuary of spending grow. Uh, and when you analyze where our tax money is spent, it's spent predominant, 60% basically of all state spending, whether it's in any area, goes to some government workers' salaries and benefits, whether they're unionized or non-unionized. Roughly 60% of all government spending at the state level, plus school districts, et cetera. And the pushback always comes from those areas. So when you analyze, whenever you have a governor that sits back and says, well, we need to raise $4.7 billion in taxes in this budget year alone, and remember, 4.7 billion in Pennsylvania. Can anyone hazard to guess what the total tax increases at the state level across the entire United States are? Our governor wants 4.7 billion. Entire tax increases across the United States, all 49 other states added together. 2.1 billion dollars in tax increases. And what's that money go towards? That money's going to school districts. We all love schools, we all love teachers. Okay, my, my daughters had their first day of school today. Um, but we also spend the sixth most per student on, out of any state in the United States. Education isn't about dollars and cents, it's about education policy. Whenever I got elected in 2010, I was not a partisan person. To this day, I believe that I'm still not a partisan person. But the sad reality is that whenever we talk about spending, taxes, and policy in Pennsylvania, there are the people who stand with the taxpayer, and then there are the folks in elected office that stand with the big government unions that drive the spending in our state. And they are exceptionally, Kevin talked about lobbyists in Harrisburg, they are the most well-funded groups in existence. The five government sector unions, the five government unions, you add their sum total of their budgets together, it's $175 million. That blows out of the water any pro-business group, all pro-business groups put together. And so whenever we're talking about tax reform, we're talking about policy changes, we're talking about government spending, you, we literally start with zero Democrat votes in the House and Senate and a no-go in, in the governor's office at this point. 273 of the 401 line items agreed to in total agreement. We send our budget to the governor. The governor vetoes the entire budget, first time in the state of Pennsylvania. Normally governors blue line, they, they strike out what lines they don't agree with so that people who, where there's agreement, they get their funding. When he vetoed the entire budget, he chose to put all of those people in the position of being political footballs. He decided to, because there's never been a completely vetoed budget, we decided to try to override the governor's veto by line item. 
and we picked out about 20 line items that we felt these were the people who get their money the soonest and they need it. They're the people who are, who are the most vulnerable, the most vulnerable groups that we support with government spending. Um, again, rape crisis centers, domestic violence, people support, uh, people transportation for school districts, et cetera. Um, the Democratic Party, our elected, my elected colleagues on the Democratic side of the aisle, who wanted to vote to override the governor's veto, you need two thirds majority, who wanted to, in personal conversation they wanted to, were put in a position by their governor, by their leadership, to stand united against doing that. The governor talks about his tax plan, but he doesn't talk about $4.7 billion in taxes. He talks about a severance tax on natural gas. The governor's number's not mine. Go to his website. $170 million out of $4.7 billion is what the severance tax brings in. That's 3.5% for those of us who aren't that quick at math. So three and a half percent, if you've gotten any of the nice little mailers about me or about your state lawmaker not agreeing, not putting, putting drilling rigs above kids, he wants to raise taxes on you, he wants to raise taxes on the public to the tune of $4.7 billion minus $170 million that is, would be borne by the gas industry. It's all about politics. And why? You know, it's hard to, it's hard to judge someone's motivation. Okay, but I'm a recovering accountant and I follow money trails. <laughs> and at the, end, at the end of the day, every bit of that money that he's promising with the 4.7 billion increase goes to a, 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 a group of government, a, a subset of government that just so happens that their public employees union supported him to the tune of tens of millions of dollars in his campaign. And that's not what Pennsylvania is about. 